Evacuate the positive feeling. Eliminate the negative. Latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with this. picked a good one this time. You know, I can't believe this place. I mean, these people can't be for real. You know what? I bet you they don't even lock their doors at night. What do you expect from a town that calls itself Fateville? Yeah, I guess. Did you bring the stuff? Hey, of course I got the stuff. Trust me. Everything we need for that vacation, right here in my pocket, including these fake contracts. Well, don't get anxious this time. Remember, we gotta make these people think that we're doing them a favor. Listen, I got a little nervous, okay? Sorry. Well, don't get nervous. It could cost us. Okay, you can trust me this time. Honest. Honest? Hmm. Good choice of words. Honest? That's exactly what we gotta convince these people that we're honest. Hey Bruno, I was wondering, what are we gonna call our mind scan this time? I don't wanna use the same name we used the last time. It could catch on. Let me see, what would you name this mine that would be suiting for this nauseating, naive little town? I don't know. Um, hey, you know what? I did notice. When we were walking through town, there's a lot of Bible names around here. Good observation, Lefty. Hmm. Bible, huh? I know. Mammon. Mammon Mines. Perfect name for a perfect town. I'll suck him in with their own lingo. <laughs> How do you know about Bible sounding names anyway? Hey, I ain't no heathen, you know. Geez, my mom used to send me to Sunday school when I was a lad. Well, till dad left. Just as well. Too much Bible ain't good for a person anyway. Kind of cuts the edge. Remember, you gotta take care of number one. Yeah, whatever you say, boss. Hey, Bruno, I was wondering, do you ever feel, you know, guilty? Guilty? My mama taught me some Bible too, you know. The Lord helps those who helps themselves. <laughs> hey, is that in the Bible? Sure is. I thought you went to that Sunday school. Remember, big important businessmen don't use bad grammar. Oh, I get it. No ain'ts, right? That's right. And spout off some of that Sunday school stuff you was talking about. Sure, I can do that. Hey, Bruno, did you notice that sign over there? It says, Emergency church meeting. It's tonight. It's for a fundraiser for the orphanage. Good timing. Perfect. Those saps are in there talking about getting extra money for a bunch of kids. <laughs> look at you. You finally had a little money in your pocket. You could have got yourself a better place, maybe bought some new clothes. But what do you do? 
You go and you gamble it all away on one of your silly schemes. Yeah, well, I almost double my money that time. Oh, really? It looks to me like all you did was lose what little money you had. You'd been far better off trusting the Lord to show you what to do with it, rather than throwing it away like you did. Wow. Now what do you have left? Proverbs 11:28 says, Whoever trusts in his own riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green branch. You could have been blessed if you'd trusted the Lord instead of your money. Oh, do I have to listen to this? <sighs> someday, Freddy, someday. Boys and girls, Freddy's learned a hard lesson today. I hope that you won't be foolish like Freddie was here. Don't trust in your money or in the things that you buy with it. Trust in the Lord and he'll see that you get what you need. Lovely. And I am so blessed to be living here. And I do have many friends. Uh, could and... we have a menu, please? Oh, oh yes. Oh, I'm sorry, how silly. Yes, a menu. So, what brings you two gentlemen to Faith Bell? Oh, we're in town. Uh, we're um, here to do the same thing that you lovely people are doing. Well, to bless others. Others? Yes. Oh. Yeah. When good fortune smiles upon a person, you like to share that good fortune with other people. You know, like, share the wealth. Well, hmm, I don't understand. Well, me, Lefty and I are blessed with incredible good luck. A mine we invested in paid off. Paid off? Yes, with uranium. The future of Canada is in uranium. Why, our mine is full of uranium. Wow. As a matter of fact, I just read about that just about just a couple months ago about uranium being um, some kind of precious metal or something. That's right. Very valuable. Hmm. You two are really blessed. Why, we're so blessed that we couldn't keep it to ourselves. So we're going around offering to other people a golden opportunity to share our good fortune. So how does someone go about starting this? Oh, very easily. You see, we're going around selling shares or parts in our mine. You give us X amount of dollars, and in return, when we sell the uranium, you get part or portion of the money. It's very simple and sure. Hmm. Oh, the only money I have right now, though, is for the offering. There you go. A giving lady like yourself wouldn't want to pass up the opportunity to give more to the orphanage and have yourself a little nest egg. Why, with some money, I could see that you could turn this place into the finest establishment in these here parts. Well, I always wanted to enlarge this diner and make it into a big, fancy restaurant where important people want to come and just eat some down home good cooking and I could even have some fancy charitable events and even weddings oh 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 wait a minute I'm sorry I was just being silly silly sorry why not at all why Miss Cordial was sharing some of her dreams with us just the other day we are so pleased that she has decided to join us in our adventure. Why, Lefty and I just love to help other people's dreams come true. Hmm, so, Miss Cordial bought into your stocks, eh? Yep. She sure did. Um, I'll have the special. And can I have an order of bacon on the side, please? So, uh, she bought some stock, eh? What are you gonna have, Lefty? 
think I'm gonna have um, the. Um... Wait, wait, one minute. Um, I want to do this. Uh, let me see. I can't go wrong. Uh, there'll be more money for the orphanage, and a little dream nest for me. What do I do? What do I do? How do you get into this? Well, ma'am, only if you're sure. I wouldn't want you doing anything you don't feel right about. Why don't you think about it just a little bit longer? We'll be in town a day or so, and then if there's any stock left... No, I want to do it now. What do I have to do? Well, this is all you have to do. Sign here on the dotted line, give us the money, and you're well on your way to seeing your dreams come true. All right, ma'am. Oh, right. <coughs> he was just <coughs> having a drink of that fine, wonderful coffee that you made. Yeah. He was drinking it too fast. Isn't that <coughs> right, Lefty? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> it's oh. the best coffee I've had in a long time. Yeah. I can see that we're going to have to make reservations the next time that we're in town. Why, this new establishment will be just bustling with people lined up to taste your cooking. Oh. Of course, they'll all be wanting to stay at Miss Cordial's five-star motel along with that lobby that we could sit and visit in just like the one we talked about miss cordial why you two ladies will be the toast of the town oh my i don't know what to say ah uh, you don't have to say anything at all me and lefty just have a pleasure in giving you ladies a hand to fulfill your dreams why it just warms our hearts doesn't it lefty yeah, sure, Bruno, whatever you say. I say I'm a mighty hungry man. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry I forgot about your breakfast. I'll be right out. Well, just wait a minute. I'll give you a hand. After all, we need to take care of these two thoughtful gentlemen. Yes, we do, don't we? What's the matter with you? You trying to blow this deal for us? Sorry, boss. <clears throat> Maybe I didn't get enough sleep last night. I don't care about your sleeping habits. Just don't blow it for us. There you go, some more coffee. Your breakfast will be out in just about five minutes. Breakfast is on the house. Oh, you're so kind. Well, my pies are all ready to go in the oven for the auction. And thanks to these two gentlemen, I won't have just pies for the orphanage. So, did you want to come and help me put them in? I would love to. I already have all my homemade quilts wrapped up, ready to go. God is so good. He is. I didn't know what I was going to do with all those quilts that I made this winter. And now look. Isn't that great? Yeah. Oh, ladies, do you know where me and my partner could get a haircut in this town? Of course. We have the finest barber around, Mr. Cutright. Mm -hmm. He's just to your left, about a block down the road. Thank you very much. So, if you need more coffee or anything else, you just call out. We'll do that. Why, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. And the pleasure's definitely been all mine. Drink up, Lefty. I think we've hit the big time. <laughs> Mr. Cutright, may I interest you in thirds? Nope, I'm full, Charity. Oh. I'll just take my bill. I okay. gotta get back to my shop. There you go. Oh, there's my buzzer. I'll be right back. Okay. Whoa, she didn't charge me for that extra piece of pie and that milkshake that I had. Whoa, what a blessing. <laughs> well, now I have a, a little bit of extra money. Now I could go buy that new licorice at the that the Lees has at the store. And while well, Sunday's coming up, I'll just put a little bit of extra into the offering. <laughs> and while well, I'm feeling really, really good, I'll give Charity a five cent tip. What was I thinking about? How can I do that to my friend Charity? 
That would be stealing. Cuddy, you got a decision to make here. You can either not tell Charity about this bill and go on sinning, or you could tell Charity about this bill and then make God really, really happy. I'll do it. I'll tell Charity about it. Pastor was right. You can't serve two masters. See, that's the deceitfulness of the riches. I'm sorry I took so long, Mr. Kerwright. Charity, the bill is wrong. It's wrong? Oh my goodness, you're right. You know what, Mr. Cartwright? What? I am such a blessed woman to have honest friends as you. Ah, Charity. <laughs> Joy, how many times do you need to hear it? Oh, until it sinks in. You're an incredible genius, a prince, my knight in shining armor. Honey, if I knew you were going to have this kind of reaction, I would have bought stocks and something a, a long time ago. You know, the first thing I want to do when our new home is built is invite Arthur and Ethel over for the weekend. Why would you go and do something like that? Just to show Ethel that you're as generous as a man as her Arthur. I don't know if I like being compared to Arthur. Oh, John, you know what I mean. I just want Ethel to eat her words. Do you think we should have one of those wraparound porches? Oh, and I've always wanted a huge kitchen. Oh, and what about one of those settees in the master bedroom? Master bedroom? Joy? John, don't spoil things. All right, honey. You have your dreams. Isn't this what stocks are all about? Our dream money? Don't you have any dreams? Joy, the reason we bought these stocks was so that we could give more money to the orphanage. Yes, John, but you said those men told you that you would have plenty of money left over after giving a generous portion to the orphanage. What do you want, John? What do I want? I would like a new tractor. And I can always see myself owning a huge farm, a couple of hundred cows, and uh, well, money's in wheat right now. Oh, and a huge garden with daisies and pansies, roses, and some fruit trees, an apple orchard, peach trees. Oh, and we need a library. We just have to have a library for the children, of course. And won't Ethel just be green with envy? Oh, oh, yes. Our own country produce stand. The biggest one in these parts. People would come from all over. Yeah. Oh, and a walk-in closet. They're a new thing. I think that's what they're called. And shoes. Blue shoes, pink shoes, ruby, <laughs> red shoes. <clears throat> Am I interrupting something here? Oh, oh, Miss Rosa. No, of course not. You are never interrupting. John and I are just planning. Yes, I heard some of your plans. Have you discovered treasure somewhere? Well, not a treasure, but close to it. You see, we have bought some stock <clears throat> in uranium. You are now looking at the proud owners of part of Canada's future. Stocks? My goodness, where did you hear about this? Oh, well, Miss Rosa, it is just so exciting. It had to have been God. You see, John was on his way this morning to Town Hall, and as he was walking by the diner, he noticed Miss Charity and Miss Cordell just dancing all over the diner. And, of course, he was curious as to why they were so happy. So, he just happened to mention to the two gentlemen how happy Miss Cordell and Miss Charity looked. The two gentlemen told John that Miss Charity and Miss Cordell had just bought stock. John being the highly intelligent man that he is, inquired about the stock. The men explained that it was stock in uranium, and then John decided to invest too. Not only will we be able to triple the amount we're giving to the orphanage, but we're also going to be able to buy some of the things we've been always dreaming about. My hero. My goodness, 
I'm not sure what to say. Uranium, you said? Did anyone check out those two gentlemen? You know, stocks can be a rather chancy thing. Miss Rosa, uranium is Canada's future. How can we lose? Canada's future? Did you have to invest a lot of money into um, Canada's future? Well, no, not too much. How much is not much, if you don't mind me asking? Well, just the money that we're going to give to the orphanage. And uh, I did borrow a little bit of money, but that money I can get back when I sell Betsy's calf. You know, perhaps we should check into those two gentlemen. You know, their minds should be registered. I'm sure Mayor Hope can find out about them. Oh, Miss Rosa, I don't think that's necessary. Miss Cordial and Miss Charity, they invested too. Maybe God sent these men into town at just the right time. They were sent all right. Sent to rob this town blind. Not from God. But you know, just the same. I was on my way to town hall anyway. I think I will ask Mayor Hope to do some checking. Miss Rosa, if that will make you feel better, then go right ahead. Good day to you. I'll, I'll keep in touch. Goodbye, Miss Rosa. Bye. Goodbye, Miss Rosa. John, older people are just so suspicious. You know, I don't think they dream very much. Mm. And if there's any dreaming going on, <laughs> I think it's about them waking up the next morning. John, you be kind. Enough of this. I'm going back to the house to finish preparing lunch. I can't wait till I have a maid. Well, today we're learning that riches or money certainly can be a worry if we allow it. We all need money to live so that we can eat, be clothed, and our moms and dads, they got bills to pay. However, God tells us not to worry about money because he will take care of us. The Bible says, look at the birds. They don't sow, reap, they don't store away things in barns, and yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Worrying about money is just another big weed that grows to choke out God's word in our lives. It stops what God wants us to do. For example, there is a story about a rich man and Lazarus. Now, Lazarus was a very poor and sick man that laid outside of the rich man's gate or his house. All Lazarus wanted was the food that fell off of the rich man's table. Now time had passed and both men died. The poor man went to Abraham's bosom and the rich man, well, he went to Hades or hell. At this time, the rich man saw Lazarus with Abraham and begged him to wet his tongue with water because of the agonizing fire he was experiencing. Things certainly had changed now. Lazarus was in comfort and the rich man in torment. During this rich man's life, it doesn't say that he worried about money, but his selfishness certainly stopped him from doing what God wanted him to do. This story tells us, in the end, money will not save us, so don't let it be first place in your life. The Bible says, what good does it do to gain the whole world, yet lose our souls? Remember this, seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Every need that you have will be met. New customers, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, hi, man. Your fame is really spreading, isn't it? <laughs> Actually, Mayor, those two gentlemen you just saw there may very well be the answer to this town's prayers. Oh, really? How's that? Those two are real saints. They're the kind of people that this town should look up to. You know, not only that they purpose to go out and help people less fortunate than themselves, now they're out there spreading their good fortune around. You know, I believe that those people were sent here to help us have the opportunity to make our dreams come true. Hold on there a minute, Mr. Cutright. I think you better give me some facts about these two so-called saints. There's only one important fact, Mayor, and that is I'm taking an active part in Canada's future. It's uranium. Uranium? 
Just what have you gotten yourself into, Mr. Cutright? Well, I purchased stock in an uranium mine. Uranium mine? Now, hold on a minute here. Have you bothered to check these guys out? I mean, I've never heard of anything like uranium stocks. Mayor, this is a sure thing. Well, if it's such a sure thing, you won't mind if I check into it a little bit, will you? Well, okay, Mayor, but you're going to look real foolish once you find out what a great opportunity this is for our town. Well, maybe so, but you know what the Bible says about these get-rich-quick schemes. And besides, I'd hate to see you lose your money. Actually, it's the orphanage's money. What? The orphanage's? N now, now, don't go getting all upset. It's, it's not like I stole the money. That money I was going to use to put in the offering for the orphanage anyways. And besides, I'm going to quadruple my money. Mr. Cutright, I hope you haven't done something foolish here. Forget the haircut for now. I'm going to go over and start checking into this right now before someone else buys into this. Well, it's a little late for that right now, Mayor. Oh, no. Who else? Well, Miss Cordial, the Waterwells, and Charity. Oh. oh, Mr. Cartwright, I'm going to go and get Miss Evidence on this right away. She's going to make some phone calls, and then I'm going to go right over and see Officer Wisdom, just in case. Mayor, don't worry. Everything's going to work out. You'll see. I hope. Hey, don't forget, the auction tomorrow. Be early. Be sure to watch Faith Field next week for the conclusion of The Buck Stops Here.